When Sweden joined the European Union in 1994, there was a special exception to the terms. Sweden would not oblige to ban the sale of snus. So what is it? And why is it so important to Sweden? Swedes love snus. In fact, compared to smoking, which has been on a steady decline for decades, demand for snus has increased in the last few years, with new innovations making it more modern and socially accepted than ever. The usage of snus, however, is everything but modern. Its origin stems from snuff, a powder made of crossed tobacco leaves inhaled through the nose. Snuff rose in popularity in Europe during the 18th century, when French ambassador in Portugal, Jean Nicot, suggested it as a remedy for headaches to the French Queen. Apparently, it worked. France was the role model for high society in most European countries, and snuff soon spread across the continent. This was especially true in Sweden, where French influence was massive. Unfortunately for snuff, the French Revolution made everything connected to the French nobility out of fashion. The use of snuff would soon become highly sensitive and frowned upon. At around the same time, in the early 1800s, Swedes began putting it under the lip instead. To allow this, producers added water and salt to create a moist texture that could be formed into a small ball or cylinder, commonly named sprilla in Swedish. This is what today is known as loose snus. Snus quickly became a hit, replacing the out-of-favor snuff as well as the expensive chewing tobacco. And at the turn of the 20th century, its popularity hit new highs and reached record levels in 1919. After World War II, American culture was spreading through Europe, which also included the rise of smoking in Sweden. This had direct impact on consumption of snus. However, this would soon be remedied as reports of the health risks associated with cigarette smoking became widely available in the late 60s. This provided a renaissance for snus, and its popularity has been on the rise ever since. So now we know how snus became a staple in the Swedish identity. But how has it avoided the decline that nearly all other tobacco products has faced in recent history? The answer to this is innovations and marketing. Although tobacco products are fairly generic, there's been several smart ways to make it more accessible for newcomers in the past. To increase sales and market shares, tobacco companies has had two options. It's obviously in the interest of manufacturers to make their products as safe as possible. After all, consumers can't consume if they're dead but it's arguably even more important from a marketing perspective. How dangerous do our consumers think it is to consume tobacco? It's a fair guess that the train has already left the station for this. Consumers are more educated than ever on the health risks with tobacco use. In many countries, there's even warning labels with terrifying pictures to dissuade potential buyers. Nicotine, as Sean Cott will confirm, is a highly addicting substance. In other words, the most pressing issue for the tobacco industry has been to introduce new people to nicotine. If this is done successfully, sales will inevitably increase. So how do you get your target audience, young adults, to start using tobacco? Well, what's the common denominator between young adults, Cartman and me? We all love candy. So what do we get when we combine traditional tobacco with candy? You guessed it, flavored tobacco. This is not a new concept. In fact, menthol cigarettes was launched as early as the 1920s, gaining immediate attention by consumers. However, it's one of the main drivers for the continuous success for snus in Sweden. But wait, flavored snus has been available since the introduction more than 200 years ago. There's got to be another reason. You're right. You see, although flavored snus has been available for long, the base has always been tobacco. Unfortunately, this includes side effects such as bad breath and yellow teeth. Not exactly the ideal combination. These side effects had an especially dawning impact on the use of snus by women, resulting in that only 3% of the Swedish women used it on a daily basis, compared to 18% of men in 2011. To combat these issues, the tobacco company Winnington launched their all-new white brand, Epoch, 
2014. This product cleansed the tobacco in several additional steps, which resulted in a completely white bag of snus, solving the issue of yellow stains on the teeth. A year later, Swedish tobacco giant Swedish Match launched their own tobacco-free, all-white snus, Syn. After the launch of Syn, several producers took off to the trend and launched tobacco-free nicotine pouches, opening the gate to a completely new audience, basically solving the initial issue. Nothing is currently pointing towards a decrease in the use of snus. Sweden already have the lowest share of smokers in Europe, and it's likely to fall even more in the coming years with many smokers making the change. After all, snus is an important part of the Swedish identity. In fact, when Swedes voted for membership to the European Union, it was a close call for the yes side, with 53%. Who knows what the result would have been if Sweden hadn't been allowed to keep its snus.